Welcome to Game Pinions episode 46. I'm your host, Calman, and today I am joined by Dakota. Hey, what's up? Not too much, not too much. So we are going to be talking today about Justin TV, a topic that I think both me and Dakota are pretty well versed in. Dakota, would you say that that is an accurate statement? I would say it's pretty accurate. I feel like we were not early adopters, but pretty early adopters to Justin TV. Yeah, I would say so too. Um, so I guess before we get into the whole Justin TV thing, this is kind of something new that we've been doing in front of our episodes. So for those of you that don't know, we are Game Pinions, a podcast where we talk selectively about video games, gaming news, and our gaming experiences, both new and old. Every Thursday, a new episode spawns out of your favorite podcast portal, YouTube, and GamePinions.net, designated for your continuous consumption. So Dakota, Justin TV, when did you first hear about Justin TV? I think that's, that's probably the question, because I, I have an idea of when I first heard about it, and I think it was probably from you, but where did you hear from it? Or I guess hear about it from. Yeah, I heard about it. Um, funny enough, so I, the first time I heard about it was definitely on YouTube, but I didn't actually like start going on there until I wanted to start finding streams for pay per views that, that <laughs> you had to buy, and obviously I couldn't buy it. And this is back in kind of like the wild west of streaming, where that wasn't really like a known thing. Um, so I heard about it. This was probably. It was freshman year of high school. So I guess that that's like 2008, 2009-ish, yeah. which I think was a year or two after it actually launched. There, It had just gone on to, like the channels had just expanded. So whenever that that big exp- expansion kind of happened, which I think was like 2009. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, because I think it was, so Justin TV launched on, I actually have the date here, look at me, uh, March 19th, uh, 2007. I definitely don't think that I even knew what that was at that point in time. And it was apparently launched by Justin Kahn, Emmett Shear, Michael Sibel, and uh, Kyle Vogt. I don't know if that's the right way to spell it, to say his name. Probably not. But um, that, so I guess that's kind of when it first surfaced. But apparently there was a time before then or during then where it was actually just a single channel of uh, Justin Kahn just streaming his life for 24 hours a day. And it was like live streaming or something like that, which I didn't know about that. Yeah, I, that was definitely before that I started watching it. But I remember um, live streaming was like pretty big then, like live casting, I guess. There was um, there was quite a few channels that did that. I think the biggest channels on Justin TV were people that live casted. Really? I didn't know that. Because I was associated Justin TV with... Um, like games or I think the first time I actually went on Justin TV was when Sean, who is a friend, a mutual friend of me and Dakota, I think he was telling us that we could watch NFL games on there. And because you guys were Cowboys fans living in New Jersey area, you guys would, I guess, watch NFL games on there illegally and jump from stream to stream. Yeah, it was great. So like I said, in the Wild West, like you could actually do that. There would be um, now if you want to find a stream of a game, I mean, you got to go through multiple sites to get there. There's still a few out there that I'm not going to say because I don't want them to get (laughs) shut down. Um, But Back then, you could find any game, and it was just like a casual thing. And that's what I was saying with like watching pay-per-views like for the UFC. Um, Back when that was like UFC 100, you were able to find streams reliable. There would be multiple streams, and it had the chat function, of course. Channels were a bit smaller, so you could actually kind of interact. Um, You'd see the same people on there, too, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I feel like it was, at least when we were watching, it was very easy to find the same channels over and over again because there wasn't really a lot to scroll through as compared to how Twitch is now. So, you know, it was, it was like, it was very, it felt very small. It felt very like crude in terms of, you know, how things were situ- situated, the resolutions of like the screens that you'd be watching would be kind of funky. Like, I don't think it was like HD or anything back then. Um, so it's, I don't know, it's really weird. It was just really strange, um, especially to think back on. Now, of course, you know, for those of you that don't know, Justin TV um, eventually basically was a, a spinoff of Twitch. So Twitch TV basically took over um, that parent company, um, Twitch, basically took over and became Twitch TV. Um, and that was on February 10th of uh, 2014 when I guess that transition actually happened. 
Now, on August 5th, 2014, that's when Justin TV officially shut down, which I was completely oblivious to all of that going down. Um, because I know Twitch, I guess, was first released as like a beta on June 6th, back in 2011. But I, once again, I had no idea what Twitch was during that time. Like, I don't remember Twitch being a thing when we were in high school. Yeah, well, your game streaming wasn't that, I don't want to say it wasn't that big, but it definitely wasn't as available now. Um, because gaming started to take over Justin TV. Like that was pretty much, I guess that was probably like 85% of it. I think at that point. Yeah. And all the channels that I had watched from like 2009, 2010, 2011, they weren't really around anymore. Um, they kind of stopped streaming because now like you got to think like when the PlayStation four came out, which would have been right around that time, you can stream right from the console. Like back then you had to have a capture card and a computer that could actually stream. Like it was to actually do it. Um, there definitely wasn't as many as there are today. Um, but yeah, I, I remember the gaming section just kind of kind of took over. And I don't like when you would go on, right? So like if you go on, you had some channels that you would go to. But did you ever like explore some of the other channels? Like did you have any like Yandras? Am I saying that right? <laughs> uh, that you would look at? <laughs> Genres? Uh, <laughs> well, I know I, I ventured in the sports. A lot of times you would go to... And I think th- I think the one time I actually used it for sports, um, when I was first moving to North Carolina, I wanted to watch an Eagles game. And the problem I was having is I would go to the Justin TV channel or sports section, and you'd click on an Eagles stream, and then it would be like soccer. Or it would take you to like a different website where you would have ads for all sorts of different things that you really didn't want. And... So that, that was kind of, I think that's probably as much as yeah, I ventured. See, I think that's when they started like regulating it because they would have the title of the stream, hey, Eagles versus Panthers, but then you click it and it's like, oh, you know what? We can't actually broadcast that here. So you have to click our link to go to our website to watch it because yeah. you used to go on and they would just be, they would have the game. Yeah, it would just be there. But uh, it would, yeah, exactly. They, they had some. They had some funny things on there. Uh, I, I like the gaming channels. I know that we shared that a little bit. Um, but they had some wacky guys on there. I know there was this one guy and I can't remember the channel name, but like every Friday or Saturday he, he would stream and it was just a live stream. It was him at his table, but he would get like hammered or he would do, I think he did some kind of drugs. I don't know, but it was super (laughs) wacky. Like he would just do the most bizarre stuff like in front of the camera. And the chat was always hilarious because like the chat was just describing what was happening. Uh, so that was funny. I remember this one guy who was like a virtual DJ, which I guess is like pre SoundCloud, I guess. I don't know when SoundCloud started, but he would just be playing music all night and taking requests and things. So like, that would be like a, a cool thing to have like off to the side if you oh, were doing yeah. something else. Um, I didn't watch many of the life casters too much. I mean, I know there was a guy in Hollywood, Florida that used to do it a lot. He was really popular and I can't remember the stream name. I know... I don't know if uh, I Justine from YouTube. She was really big on YouTube. I think she still is. Um, but I know that she was on there quite a bit. Really? Um, yeah. I, I never watched her, but she's she was like first on like a lot of social media. Like she was on Twitter when that first came out. Um, she was kind of ahead of the curve with a lot of those. But yeah, still yeah there were some around. pretty big streamers. I, I mainly did the gaming stuff, but yeah, that's that's pretty much where I stayed too. And you know, I, I definitely vividly remember you know, those summers that I guess we had like our laptops from school. I remember like those summers I would stay up till ridiculous hours for me back then oh, man. on Justin TV, just talking in like chat rooms and stuff like that. It was, it was insane. Like I'd stay up to like 3 AM talking to like random people on a Justin TV stream. And honestly, when I was on the stream, I never really watched anybody play. I would just be in the chat rooms, just screwing around. Like I had no idea what was really going on on screen. No, it was nice. It was kind of entertaining because you had this one thing that kind of everybody was centered on, but it wasn't really like the main focus. It was like secondary. So you go into like having a conversation or like dicking around with somebody and then you're talking about the game out of nowhere, you know, what what they're doing. I used to love to watch the Fallout 3 streams for some reason. I used to think they were like the best thing ever to just watch people do playthroughs. Um, But that was a lot of streams that start with. But hey, there's Madden streams that were always fun. You know, there was a big Madden community on there, which was cool. Yeah. So I do kind of miss that a little bit. Now, were you ever on a stream? Like, did you ever play with like a streamer that was on Justin TV? We did. Yeah. Um, I played Madden against one guy, and he whooped me. He was he was really good, but he would like give you tips. 
Uh, and then we played Modern Warfare 2 actually against the same guy. They were trying to play like competitive. And uh, me and a couple buddies were actually like competitive on game battles. Like we weren't like pros by any means, but we were definitely like above average. And then we stopped them on the stream. And then it was just kind of <laughs> awkward after that. That was oh, about yeah. it though. That it was, he was mainly a Madden player, but they were trying to get into it. Okay. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I I played uh, the Conduit, which was a uh, Wii first person ex- first person uh, shooter, um, and I played that with a, a streamer and ended up becoming like a moderator on his channel. He didn't really get a ton of views. Um, I basically abused my power. Oh <laughs> yeah, you got to be a people. mod. It was awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, I was I, I loved it. Um, so it was cool being able to watch myself play on the computer because that's something that was really foreign to me at that point in time where it's like, it's kind of like what you were saying earlier where, you know, capture cards and I imagine even the software that's used on PC like OBS and um, Streamlabs and a whole bunch of different things like that. I imagine that those weren't really prevalent back then. And honestly, even the capture cards probably looked a heck of a lot different than what they do now. Um, so yeah, like, you know, the whole gameplay recording and the whole streaming thing, uh, was really, it was really confusing to me, um, as to how they were actually doing it. So, it was, I don't know, it was cool seeing them do it, but it looked like something that was completely unobtainable for like a normal person to be able to do. That is the, the perfect way to describe it because I think that's what made it so entertaining to watch maybe. I don't know because it was like now streaming is such a normal thing. But like I remember us talking when like Call of Duty 4 came out and they showed the multiplayer on X-Play and that was like the biggest thing. And I remember saying to you like, man, like it stinks. I'll never be able to experience that because that was like before we had <laughs> like, you know, I didn't even have a computer and like, oh, playing online on the PlayStation 3. What? <laughs> I'll never be yeah, able to yeah, do that. Yeah. And then uh, it just it just seems so unattainable. And now it's just it did. It's just a part of the experience. It's so standard now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because I mean, I, I remember when I think the first game that you played online, if I remember correctly, it was Grand Theft Auto 4. You are correct. It was Grand Theft Auto 4. Yeah. And I just remember, like, as you were saying, you were telling me, like, the workaround that you had in order to even play that online. And I was just, like, shocked. And I was like, I need to figure out a way to get this Wii online. And I remember for graduation that year, and I've told this story before on the podcast, but it's so relevant. I'm going to tell it again. And for my graduation present from eighth grade, I asked for a wireless router. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now, the biggest flaw to this, though, is that just because you get a wireless router doesn't mean it's going to be compatible with a Windows 98 computer. So it was basically a wasted <laughs> a wasted graduation present because I could not play online. Oh, no. Um, you were so close. I know. But it just it seems so foreign to me. And, and even like back when we, um, you know, we get like the PlayStation 2 games and it's like online enabled. I was like, do you put the you put it in your computer like how do you how do you even go about doing something like that so it's it's just weird it was it's just different times back then and then especially when you're you know young you don't have a job it's like you know it's not like i can just go out and get like a get something that i can stream <laughs> off of or get better internet or get my parents to get a better computer it's just it was a very odd time well because like I had something similar where like we had Comcast and whatever deal we had, I, I'm sure we had like the triple play of whatever it was back then. So we had a modem, but no router. So it literally served no purpose. We didn't have a computer. <laughs> uh, and I remember like like the, the plug wasn't plugged into anything, like the Ethernet cord, I think except the cable box, because I think that it needed to to work. But I remember one day looking at the back of my PlayStation 3 and being like, wait a minute, this is the same port that's on the modem. I just needed a longer a longer cable, but I didn't have one. I had like literally like a foot cable. So I took my PlayStation 3 out to the living room and it booted up and connected online. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> it was amazing. And I, I was that whole summer, I did nothing but play online. I started with uh, Grand Theft Auto 4, moved on to Resistance, Fall of Man, and then played Call of Duty 4 getting a little sidetracked now, but that eventually got me into, uh, again, because now I had the ability, you know, you had a web browser on there. So that's where you start to get into like watching the streams and seeing that that's becoming popular now. Yeah. Now we, both of us, we were watching uh, a channel called, what was it? Scotty Max late night gaming or something. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. He used to play fallout a lot. 
that's how I found him. He played Fallout 3. Yeah, and I think that was really, I don't know if it was the first time I got like involved with like internet forums or chatting with random people online, but that was kind of like, it was addicting going on there and just talking to a whole bunch of random people and, you know, trolling the person playing the game a little bit. <laughs> I think and, he got banned the first night because I think he said something uh, something dumb. I can't remember, but I think he got banned. And then you made another account like and me. came back. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too. It was so easy to make a new account. You could so just, easy, you know, yeah. yeah, just make a new name and boom, you're done. Well, you know, I think the thing with um, why it was so addicting was like now you're always connected you know, with your cell phone or just even um, just online in general. And back then you really weren't. Yeah. So it was just a way to be social, even though you didn't really know those people personally. I mean, you could have been talking to, geez, anybody. Um, but those small streamers, there was a lot more s- small streamers, but they had the same people that would come back and watch, um, which was like the same, like, you know, 10 to 15 people, which is there, not to say there's not small streamers now, but I don't know. I yeah. just feel like it was more um, personable back then. Oh, yeah, yeah. You would know everybody in the comments section, and you would know the person streaming. Like, they would actually communicate with you in the chat very easily. They would interact. Um, because, yeah. yeah, like, your comment wouldn't get, you know, drowned out by just, like, a whole bunch of other comments. You know, everyone would kind of respond. You think you could, like, direct, you know, direct messages at people. They had the monkey emojis, <laughs> which were pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, those. It was just, oh man, it was so crude. Um, but at any point in time when you were watching these streams or, you know, on the chat, did you have like any, you know, indication in your head, like, you know, this is going to be huge in a couple of years. Like right now it's just kind of starting off and, you know, there's not a ton of people doing it, but in a couple of years, this thing's going to explode. Like, did you ever think that this was going to be like the next big thing at any point in time? I don't think I ever really thought about it too much. I mean, it makes sense though, right? Like you start, you gradually, you go from that. Um, I mean, I knew that like streaming wasn't going anywhere because like, did you used to watch YouTube um, Let's Plays and things like that back when they were popular? That was like right before, right around this time, really, I guess, like 2007, 8, 9. Uh, I probably didn't start watching YouTube Let's Plays until probably like post 2012 post 2012 okay so even Mm -hmm. if it's like not even like let's plays but just people playing the game like that's kind of how i started was just watching people do playthroughs of games um yeah and then kind of you know graduated to the watching the live and then once i started watching the live i really didn't go back and watch like the let's plays anymore um or if that's even what they were called at that point um but I, so I, I kind of knew that like this was the next, um, like this was the new normal, I guess. But I don't ever think I was thinking like, oh, this is going to blow up and become like how Twitch is now where you have people like Summit and, well, Ninja, who's now on Mixer. But, you know, people that are just playing this as a job and making millions of dollars. Yeah, that is really crazy to think about because, yeah, I had no concept of this becoming a big thing or people making money off of it. Because it didn't really seem, at least to me, you know, lucrative at the time, just because you, you didn't really see a big audience and it's just people playing video games. Um, so, yeah, in terms of like, you know, the scope of how big that beginning actually was and how influential it was to, you know, even streamers now with Twitch and Mixer and I think there's other stream services out there too, but those are kind of the big two, YouTube Live, all that. And yeah, I just, I didn't have a concept of, you know, if, is this going to blow up and become basically standard it's a standard form of entertainment now um so it's it's really it's really strange i'm not sure to be fair i'm not sure if anybody our age could have foresaw that you know becoming as huge as it did it's kind of just you know uncharted territory yeah it was and and like we were talking about earlier it was just it, it wasn't easy to do you know so it wasn't something everybody could do and uh you know of course i wish i i you know we were right there in terms of like (laughs) hitting the popularity stride you know if you get a channel that's popular on justin tv for gaming and you know we obviously love the gaming ones they were uh you know probably our main hobby we were right there before we were on the bubble you know before it blew up and then uh you know those channels that were on there i didn't look up before the podcast i probably should have there's no channel that i watched that i know is big now that was on justin tv i can't remember any of the big streamers on there i'm sure they had to be though right once it once Twitch became a part of Justin TV before it took over completely, I would imagine some people had to start on Justin TV. 
Yeah, that it does kind of make me wonder. Like, I wonder if there were some people that were just like, you know, I'm sticking with Justin TV. I'm not going to move on to this new platform. You know, new platform is going to fail and all that. And then Justin TV, it's closed down, you know, a few years later. I don't know. I'm not really sure because you would think that you would think that it would have to translate unless, you know, once Twitch opened up, more competition came in and they just kind of got washed away. Uh, like, I'm not really sure. Like, I, cause I, I can't remember if there was like as much viewership on Justin TV as Twitch eventually got. Cause I, I feel like there probably wasn't. No. Yeah. Everything um, had moved onto that whole gaming, um, category, you know, like the live streaming, nobody's really doing that too much. Um, that was the, the big thing there, I guess, you know, was the alternate channels, which is funny enough. Now Twitch has, you know, you can go on there and now one of the biggest categories is just chatting or, you know, they play D and D on there. They have those miscellaneous, um, categories now. So it kind of comes full circle, I guess. Yeah. It's just in TV. It, it, it literally is. Yeah. <laughs> it went from only gaming to gaming and kind of this. And now it's no, you have gaming and you have this and you have this and you have this. Yeah. And uh, man, and, and just chatting is probably, is probably even more popular than the gaming is now. It's always up there in categories. Yeah. It always is. Uh, it's one of the highest. Yeah. That's crazy. And I think what's, what's also interesting too, I'm not sure if the people playing games back then really had face cams either. I think mainly it was just like a, a feed of the game. Nobody I watched had face cams. Yeah, at least all the streams that I was um, productive in, I guess you could say, or active in, they just had the game. I feel like that was just hard enough to get going. The only people that had face yeah. cams, I think, were the people that would like live stream. Like, and they would use the camera that was built into their computer or they obviously had a separate USB, but... Um, yeah, I don't know when it started. When did people start face camming on, did Twitch start that? I don't know. Now it's standard. I don't know. You know, now you tend to like, y you don't really watch the stream unless they have a face cam. I feel like it's like part of the experience. Yeah. That's, uh, it's, you know, the creator, the streamer, that's kind of who you're watching for in a way. So them having like a face cam, I guess, makes it a little bit more unique rather than just watching, you know, gameplay, I guess, of the game, which is really odd. And I think... A lot of that probably has to do with just limitations of software. There probably, I'll probably be wrong here, but there there probably wasn't a software out there that allowed you to have, you know, different segments or different, I'm trying to think what OBS calls them, different scenes, I think, where you can select having, you know, video be pulled from different channels. So I imagine that they weren't really able to have both gameplay and like a face cam or something during that time i think it was just you know ultimately a, a limitation of, of what they had to work with yeah that would make sense but it's really yeah it's it's just really really bizarre though to think that you know we spent hours in a chat room watching a, some gameplay and we didn't even know what the guy looked like i mean he was just we heard him sometimes i think <laughs> you didn't really have well back then too so you make a good point right like now your identity is kind of out there i mean nobody's really hiding behind a screen name um you know who all your streamers are you know their real names who they look like if you watch people now back then that wasn't really the case you were still kind of like that anonymous whatever your screen name was is who you were and a lot of times yeah people use like their real names now and stuff and you know also in terms of uh, audio equipment too um, I think most people were just using like headset mics. Like they weren't using like, you know, the blue snowball or blue Yeti or, you know, any of these, you know, Electro Voice R20, sure SM7Bs. Like they were just using their straight up headset mics and chances <laughs> are they were either their gaming headset or something they just picked up at Walmart for like 20 bucks. Um, but you know, they, they got by with just the equipment that they had. So, I mean, it's not like they could show it off on the webcam most of yeah, the time. Now it's become so, um sponsored you know everybody is showing their equipment and what they're using their mouse their keyboard their headset their mouse pad g they had fuel. led yeah, yeah g fuel they all have their g fuel <laughs> water bottle filled with g fuel <laughs> brought to you by yeah, g dx fuel. racers i don't know i i definitely miss it i think you know like I said, just kind of scrolling. It was always fun to go on late at night and just sometimes you'd find like King of the Hill streaming just out of nowhere, you know, and there'd be a, a, a chat room to go along with it or they'd have a TV show because, again, you could stream whatever you wanted. It, there was no uh, there was no copyright that would take you down. So it, it was definitely a unique experience. I'm glad I got to be a part of it for sure. Like, And we were kind of in the prime of it too. 
Yeah, yeah. I like that because it's such a big thing and I think it always probably will be at this point. It's it's cool that I guess we have some kind of, you know, records in our heads about how things used to be and how unstreamlined they were and how crude they were and um, you know, not even having I I'm pretty sure, I'm almost positive that Justin TV did not even have like a standard streaming resolution uh with its screen because it was it's a really odd size. Um, so it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just really weird to think back on it and see where we're at now where Twitch is really built up now. I mean, like we were talking about earlier, it's like you post a comment in there, you know, the audience will just erase that comment within seconds a lot of the times. Um, so, but I think you're right though. I think I do kind of miss the, the Justin TV experience because it was so wild Westy and like so ridiculous to think that you could basically stream whatever you wanted and not have any repercussions from it. You could, like you were saying, King of the Hill. So if you did that today, you'd probably last a good, I don't know, minute, if that. You get shut down like instantly, yeah. Or like the music channel. Well, I mean, they have, um, I know they do have music channels on Twitch, but I know like just, you know how like music copyright is. I mean, that stuff gets taken down almost immediately. So I don't know the rules with that. Um, yeah. it, it was unique. I, I'm, do you still do you go on Twitch at all, or do you still watch? Uh, it's very rare that I go on Twitch. I just feel like I don't have a lot of time, and most of the time when I want to see like gameplay and stuff, I'll probably just look it up on YouTube, or I'll end up just playing it myself. Um, I don't like going into a Twitch stream, and if you're not there at the beginning, it'll be like you're in the middle of him or the person playing a game. Um, and I don't know. It's just, it's kind of weird. Like, I, I just don't, I don't really like that. <laughs> it's, it's just kind of yeah, weird. Yeah. It, it makes sense. I mean, I'm definitely not as active as I was on Justin TV, uh, partly for what you said in terms of like having the time. I mean, back then we had no job, no responsibility. You know, I could play games from 8 AM till, you know, 8 AM the next day if I wanted to. Um, so now like during my free time, I'd much rather play them than, uh, then watch, you know, I'd rather hop on a game with you playing NHL or play some Warzone because um, you may only get two hours a night, if that, some nights. Um, but the other thing is, is that I just don't feel like I have the attention anymore. I feel like the, um, I guess the shininess kind of wore off of it. There's still a few streamers I do like to watch. Like I do go on Twitch occasionally. Um, if I can't find anything on TV or I'm not watching a show and somebody I like, I'll tune in. But it's definitely, uh, it doesn't hold my attention like it did. No, yeah, I don't think it does either. Like, even when I watch YouTube videos a lot of times, I find myself fast-forwarding a lot to get to what I guess I want to get out of the video, which I never yeah. used to be like that. I used to sit there and just watch it for the long haul. Yeah, like when you saw one of the people you subscribed to, like, remember the feeling when they would put out, like, a 25-minute video? Or I think back then it was, like, it was... What, was it 10 minutes the max unless you had a certain partnership so they had to split it up into like four videos that were 10 minutes yeah long. yeah it was something but like i used that, to get yeah. like excited yeah and i would i would watch all of it if i see a video longer than like 10 minutes i'm like uh, uh do i have time minutes to watch all this or just like you said am i just skipping to get what i want out of the video and then i close it out or i move on yeah yeah i mean that's that's pretty much how i am too um, but I will say that's that's why I like podcast a lot, um, just because I don't have to really dedicate a specific time for them. You know, I can just you know play them in my car when on on the way to work. Obviously, that hasn't been a thing for uh, a few months now. But you know, even while you know you're at work, you can keep like a, a headphone in or you know earbud in rather and and listen to a podcast, and it doesn't really uh, you know obstruct anything because you're not really forced to sit there and, and watch in order to gain something out of it. Um, so that's kind of been, I guess, my form of entertainment. But yeah, with, with YouTube though, it's it's like I don't really have a ton of patience for videos like I used to. And it's kind of sad, but I also think, you know, YouTube is kind of a lot different now than it also was back then where it's not really super easy sometimes to see what your subscriptions are posting out because they just don't really update the feed anymore like they used to. 
Um, so that kind of plays a factor in too, but yeah, there's just, there's not really enough time. Like if I'm going to like the bathroom or something, I'll I'll pop up a YouTube video and and watch that. Um, but that's (laughs) usually the only time I have time to watch uh, a YouTube video for longer than, you know, five minutes or so. Yeah. I'm in the same boat for sure. For sure. I remember the, uh, the transition. Remember when old YouTube went to new YouTube? God, that was weird too, because the old YouTube was also very crude. But it, it was, was very crude. It was so customizable, though. You could make your channel like whatever you wanted it to look like. And now they're super vanilla. It's very strange. I remember when they changed the format, and all these videos would come out, and, and you know they would be, uh, you know, because YouTube was slowly rolling out the new, um, like the profiles and the new format. Yeah. And all the videos were like, don't force us into this new format, you know, sign the petition. Like, no, it's not going to do anything, but (laughs) I guess people thought it did. Well, and that was right after, I guess, Google acquired them, right? And they started rolling in the Google Plus stuff and tying that into the accounts, or is that before then? That was one. I'm trying to think now. Was it before then? You know, I remember when they changed the, remember when you could like, change your profile different colors you could change it like blue or green yeah you can change Um, the font and everything yeah yeah the font like that was i feel like when it went from the old version to that is the one that i remember a lot but then i do remember when google took over and that was another big transition a lot of people didn't like that they took out a lot of um like you said the custom customizable um you know things they had on the profile now everything is pretty standard i guess and it does look clean but i don't know I think most people now are going for more of a vanilla look. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Eventually, maybe we'll have a uh, a website equivalent to what Twitch was with Justin TV to YouTube. I don't know. YouTube's kind of weird now. Like, I, I a lot of people are, move, are you know leaving it. Like, Joe Rogan just left YouTube, essentially. I mean, he did get offered a ton of money, but it's, I don't know. YouTube just seems a little bit on the toxic side if you you know, keep up with any of like the drama and stuff that goes on, on that site. Yeah. I think there's so, it seems, and I don't broadcast on YouTube, obviously. So just coming as a, a viewer from what people that do broadcast though, they say that YouTube is so quick to demonetize and, um, you know, the way they censor certain things, some of their algorithms, obviously they lead you to see kind of what they want you to see, uh, which I know a lot of people aren't a fan of myself included, but I can't really blame people, I guess, for moving in that case. Yeah, I'm sure it's different coming from an employee of YouTube in the sense that you know they, they send you money or you get paid to, to utilize their website as opposed yeah. to somebody like me who just tunes in. What, you don't like Jimmy Kimmel? <laughs> uh, YouTube's basically TV now, right? It's, it's weird. <laughs> basically, it's weird. YouTube TV, which I've heard good things about. To, uh, to be fair, I've heard good things about YouTube TV. Yeah. Um, I haven't pulled the trigger on it yet because, of course, in our area, you still need Comcast for internet. So I can't really cut that cord yet, but I've heard good things about it. Yeah, it's interesting. I haven't really dabbled in that at all, but who knows? <laughs> Maybe one day. Yeah, now it's on a, on a table and un, unobtainable, but <laughs> so yeah, it's playing just, online and look how that went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we'll all just have YouTube TV. <laughs> well,. Um, I think that's pretty much all I had to say about Justin TV. You know, it was a great streaming service while it existed. It did things that were probably actually still illegal during that time, but nobody knew. <laughs> just wasn't enforced. <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't enforced. And um, yeah, I, you know, I, I miss its uh, Wild West-ness of it. And uh yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't have time for it now anyway if it still existed. So, Scotty Mac, if you're out there, man, let us know. Link to the channel. I'll I'll come back. I'll watch. Yeah, please unban me because I'm pretty sure I got banned <laughs> when uh, <laughs> when there was a massive uh, channel drama and everyone got kicked. He just is still endlessly streaming to himself now after <laughs> yeah, deleting so everybody yours. for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you guys like this podcast episode, make sure you share it with your friends. You guys can find us, like we said in the beginning of the episode, on your favorite podcast app, youtube.com and gamepinions.net. It's been fun. It's been real. And we will see you guys in the next episode of Game Pinions. See ya.